Hi everyone, Dr. Mark here. In this video, we're gonna look at cartilage and some of the cartilage types. Now first remember, cartilage is a type of connective tissue. And connective tissues, what they do is they hold, they bind and they support structures. And we know that there's many different types of connective tissues. You've got bone, you've got cartilage, you've got tendons, you've got ligaments, you even have blood, for example. Now what makes a connective tissue a connective tissue is they are made up of three important things. They're made up of cells, gels and fibers. Now when we're talking about cartilage, the cells, gels and fibers that compose cartilage include, for cells, the chondroblasts. Chondro as a prefix means cartilage. Blast means to build. It's an immature cell type. It helps build the cartilage. Once these cells that are building the cartilage mature, they turn into chondrocytes with the suffix site just meaning cell. Now gels, the gels make up the predominant extracellular matrix of that particular tissue type. And so in this case, it's a ground substance made up predominantly of proteoglycans, that's proteins and sugars. And these proteoglycans have all these little things sticking off. Like you can see here, you've got the proteoglycan here, and it's got all these things sticking off. These things sticking off are called GAGs, glycosaminoglycans. And the most predominant type of glycosaminoglycan, which is just a carbohydrate, right, is chondroitin sulfate. So you can see these little blue feather looking things sticking off, that's chondroitin sulfate. And what chondroitin sulfate does is it's negatively charged and it loves binding to water. And so that means that the gels within cartilage have a very high capacity for holding water to it. In actual fact, 80% of all cartilage is water. And when it pulls cartilage towards it, it starts to fill itself up until it becomes quite this turgid solid mass. And because you're gonna find cartilage lining pretty much every bone's surface when it's at a joint, that means that when you put pressure on that cartilage, it evenly distributes that force throughout that fluid, and therefore the force that's been transmitted into the bone is evenly distributed. It's like when you jump onto a waterbed, it evenly distributes that force. So that's the gels. The fibers that we look at for cartilage is predominantly collagen, so the majority is collagen, but some contains high amounts of elastic tissue. Now what you're gonna find is that uh, cartilage is the precursor tissue for bone for the fetal organism. So for fetuses, instead of having a skeleton, they actually have cartilage. In actual fact, newborn babies are predominantly cartilage instead of bone, and then it turns into bone through a process which I'll discuss in another video. Now, we've outlined all the different parts of cells, gels, and fibers when it comes to connective tissue, but uh, when it comes to cartilage, but there's three types of cartilage. You've got elastic cartilage, fibrocartilage, and hyaline cartilage. All right, let's first start with elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage simply has high amounts of elastic tissue. And there's only two places you're gonna find this elastic cartilage, the external ear and also the epiglottis. The epiglottis is that little cartilaginous flap that sits over the top of the trachea so that we don't bring water and food into our airways. The second type is fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage is there to resist compressive forces. So if you think what part of our body needs to resist compressive forces, that's gonna be our vertebral column. So the discs in between our vertebrae are gonna be made up of fibrocartilage, but there's other places such as our pubic symphysis. So at our pubis, where the two bones come together, you're gonna to have fibrocartilage, and you can also find fibrocartilage at the knee joint. Again, to resist compressive forces. The last one I wanna talk about is hyaline cartilage. Now this is the most common or most abundant type of cartilage in the body, and it lines articulating surfaces of long bones. So for example, you're gonna have hyaline cartilage here, you're gonna have hyaline cartilage here, hyaline cartilage here and here. Again, lining the articulating, so when one bone talks to another bone at a joint, that's an articulation. So hyaline cartilage is also called articulating cartilage or articular cartilage. You'll also find hyaline cartilage at our ribs, so at the cartilage portion of our ribs, and also at our nose, for example. So think about it, cartilage is connective tissue. You're gonna find it anywhere where we need some sort of durability, but also slight pliability, needs to be able to move a little bit, and it's gonna resist compressive forces, and also is gonna resist other types of forces, such as that of friction at articulating surfaces. So that's cartilage.